Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Dominic Nikolai and today, or within this video, I'm gonna be showing you what it's like for someone who goes to the gym uh, to get their wisdom teeth removed and what uh, sort of effect that has on my body and how I'm gonna try and uh, combat any sort of negative effects that I might see from, you know, anesthesia and just simply what what having four wisdom teeth removed out of my head is gonna be doing to my physique. So I'll probably do a, um, like a before and an after to see what happens to my body in terms of um, any sort of negative effects or whatever. Uh, and today, right now, what we're doing is I'm going to my consultation appointment. So the actual surgery is in, is in 10 days and the consultation appointment is today. So that's basically gonna be for them like looking at my teeth, seeing what they need to do. So really quick, sort of the reason that I'm doing this is so that I can basically carry out all of my other dental plans for this year. So yeah, this is what my smile looks like right now. And not that getting my wisdom teeth removed is gonna directly affect that, but basically I need to get my wisdom teeth removed in order to do the other things that I wanna have done in my mouth, being Invisalign and a crown lengthening. Uh, so I wanna get like a little gum reduction up there. And um, in order to have the Invisalign and the crown lengthening, I have to get my wisdom teeth removed, otherwise they can't make an Invisalign mold. I need that. No, I know that. But, uh, no, I'm just making a YouTube video. Like, okay. a <laughs> but there's a little group in that. Direct pain from them. Yeah. I feel it. I feel pressure occasionally. Yeah. Um, and what I think to be, you know, them coming in or whatever, but I don't yeah. think they yeah. cause any. Probably the eruption type pain. Yeah. Absolutely. Open really big for me. Good job. You're doing great. Yeah. So the issue is, I can see your teeth, but there's some soft tissue over the back side of them. Uh huh. So that's not ideal, okay? Uh huh. The roots of those teeth are actually in the sinus, and when we take the tooth out, there can be a little hole into the sinus where the tooth was. It's actually not all that uncommon, and when that occurs, it tends to fix itself. There's not a whole lot we need to do about it. The rear is over here. This just happens to be superimposed. If you look here, these bones come together. It's just coming together a little bit different, so there's nothing there. Okay. There's nothing to be of concern. Uh, you're going to be on soft, mushy stuff for a few days, right? and then you can advance it as you see fit. You don't want to avoid crunchy stuff, really. Okay. And then all right, so I just finished up the consult earlier today, and I'll tell you how that went in a second. But right, but first, I want to share my uh, my dinner with you guys, and kind of what I'm doing for that tonight. So right here, I have two tablespoons of olive oil and a bit of uh, chopped rotisserie chicken, and then I got my uh, my rice in the microwave. What I like to do with my chicken for like a matter of convenience, and also it's pretty cheap because rotisserie chickens, especially from Walmart, I think are like less than I think it was like less than five bucks. What I like to do is I like to take the whole rotisserie chicken, and basically I'll just take I'll just put it on a cutting board and I'll just you know, wash my hands and I'll just pick it apart and just take all the good meat off of it. And then I'll basically put all that rotisserie chicken meat in a Tupperware as if, kind of a, as if I prepped the chicken you know, from scratch in terms of cooking it raw and stuff like that. But instead it's just a lot easier for me to do it this way because obviously it's already cooked. The reason I'm cooking it or reheating it in the pan right now is just because I think it tastes a lot better with a bit of olive oil. The rotisserie chicken gives me about three servings of meat so three servings of meat for five dollars that's already cooked um, is a really good deal. And obviously you don't have to cook it this way again. I just like to do it because it tastes better. So I'll pick it apart, throw the carcass away, that's that. And then for this, this is that frozen spinach I was telling you guys about last time. You'll notice that it's uh, crushed up obviously. I'm just going to take this frozen crushed up spinach and I'm just going to sprinkle it or dump it actually in this pan right here. As you can see right there. That's about, I don't know, four ounces of frozen spinach. So now I'll just take this bag. So that way the spinach stays uh, nice and piecey because if you leave it on the counter for too long, then it'll thaw out and it'll basically just freeze into one, or excuse me, it'll thaw into one giant chunk of spinach. You'll put it back in the freezer and then it will become one giant chunk of frozen spinach, which obviously is no good. And spinach is something that obviously, I mean, obviously spinach doesn't even need to be cooked, so. I and mean, you eat it in salads and stuff like that. This is just kind of basically to de-thaw it and to keep it lasting longer because spinach goes bad fairly quickly if you don't eat it. And I definitely don't eat spinach every day. I usually have to eat like broccoli and green beans and stuff like that. It's got the chicken, got the rice, got the spinach. That's that, olive oil. Now let me explain the how the consult went because um, it's it played out to be kind of interesting. So I'm gonna try to explain this as quickly and effectively as possible. So I go into the doctor's office dentist office, whatever. Consult goes great. He basically says, you know, looking at, looking at your x-rays, it's going to be a pretty straightforward, sim procedure. So that's all fine and well, but what I'm trying to talk about is the, the financial aspect of it. 
So I obviously have dental insurance, and my dental insurance um, is covering uh, a good huge portion of this um, procedure. However, anesthesia is obviously a very uh, expensive thing to have done to a patient. My remainder of my dental insurance for 2018 was not gonna cover the full cost. That being said, the very nice receptionist at the front desk hands me um, two pieces of paper, and basically they are their treatment plans. So basically one, one piece of paper, it says $750, which is basically what I would have to pay out of pocket after insurance takes care of whatever it's gonna take care of. The other piece of paper was local anesthesia, which is basically just a shot it, just for numbing in the in the affected area, so I'm not gonna I wouldn't be completely asleep. And that piece of paper was for two hundred dollars. So going in there, I I knew that I was gonna have to pay an out of pocket cost, but I didn't expect it to be that much of a difference between the two two ways I could go about this procedure, which basically left me in a very um, you know serious state of consideration, I guess you might say. So basically, the way that I was looking at, and this is not anything um, against or to say anything bad about the place I'm having this procedure done at because they're all very nice. Um, you know, I'm not expecting that they give it to me for free or at a discounted rate or whatever because I know that this is not something that's cheap to have done. Basically the way that I was looking at this situation, the way I was seeing it, the way that she was presenting it to me is she's going, okay, you're gonna pay $750 if you're a baby. Meaning you have to pay $750 if you wanna take the easy way out and be asleep for the duration of the procedure. And the other piece of paper that she handed it to me in my eyes. So you know, $200, you can handle a little pain, you can handle a little stress. Obviously, I would prefer to be a slate for the procedure, but not for $550 more out of my pocket. So that left me in a pretty um, serious uh, mental dilemma with myself. After about 30 seconds, I basically just said, well, all right, I guess I'm gonna have to uh, do the, the local anesthesia because I can't, you know, bear to pay $550 more for just because I can't handle it, you know? I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of seems to be kind of silly, right? I mean, that's, that's like more expensive than any traffic ticket I've ever gotten, which I've only gotten one, but it was $300, but anyways. So long story short, she's like, all right, well, let me see what we could do. Instead of writing it this way, we're just gonna write it this way. So it's only gonna be one unit and that'll bring your cost down to $250 for the general anesthesia. Instead of paying $750, I was able to get away with paying $250 thanks to the nice receptionist, thanks to the doctor there. Um, so that was really cool, but it was kind of interesting. So now I'm about to eat breakfast and this is basically a lot like what my uh, food is gonna look like after the surgery. So I got my one up vegan protein, 250 grams of blueberry, 50 grams of honey, cashew butter, oats, cinnamon, stuff like that. So just a high calorie type of shake with good wholesome ingredients. I got a quick story for you guys. Right now, I'm, I'm headed to a Krispy Kreme. That's a different story. The story I wanted to tell you guys is, you guys know that I was in the military, but for those of you who don't, I was in the in the Marine Corps for four years in the reserves. And so when you're in boot camp, basically the military's job is to make sure that each and every um, individual in the military is physically ready to go to combat if they if they need to if they need to. Part of that includes. Um, you know, your teeth, your mouth, because if you are having, uh, you know, toothaches and tooth issues while you're deployed somewhere, obviously they're not gonna get the full uh, use out of you. And not only are they not gonna get the full use out of you, but you're gonna become, you're then gonna become a burden to, uh, you know, whatever unit you, you may be with at that time if you're overseas in a, in a combat zone. Anyways, that being said, they remove everyone's wisdom teeth in, in boot camp if you have them. Every day, we were all, um, you know, in my in my platoon, my platoon of about 80 people. All, you know, we'd all wake up at whatever time in the morning, four, four or five o'clock, whatever. There would be a, a dental list. And I'm sorry the camera's shaking on so much just because we're on a really bumpy road right now. But anyways, there'd be a dental list of uh, who who would be going to the dentist, the dentist that day. And basically every, everyone knew that that meant that you're gonna get your wisdom teeth, you know, taken out of your head. And to be honest, um, that was definitely not the place where I wanted to have my wisdom teeth to be done because number one, that's not the kind of environment that you want to be having like a pretty big surgery like that in. Number two, I don't necessarily trust their uh, their dentists there. So the people that came back from their wisdom teeth getting done, they would always be uh, looking in, in, in pretty bad shape. And everyone who I asked who got their wisdom teeth done there, uh, said that they were not very good at doing it. So I knew that I definitely didn't want to get it done there. Uh, thankfully, somehow, I was like the only one in the platoon that didn't 
never got called for the for the for the dental list or whatever. And honestly, even if they did call me, I would have had to tell them like, look, I'm not, I can't, I can't do this here. I'm gonna have to do it like at my own dentist at home if this is something that you want me to have done. Anyways, that's why I'm doing it now. I just wanted to share that story with you. This is one of my favorite ways to get my fiber in for the day, or not for the whole day, but for you know a good portion of it. So I have carrots at the bottom. I have some pre-chopped celery that I chopped up on the top. And then to this, I just add water and I blend it up and then I just drink. There's the uh, end result. And now it doesn't taste bad at all, to be honest. I actually think it tastes pretty good. So this is probably a lot of what I'm gonna be doing after the uh, surgery because I still obviously need to get my fiber in, but I don't want to eat you know, things like this in their unblended form because obviously this type of stuff is gonna get stuck in the cavity that the wisdom tooth leaves when it's not in my mouth anymore. Today is the day of the surgery. We're headed there uh, right now. Bianca's nice enough to drive me and pick me up after it's over. Um, I am a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. Just kind of weird to think about that I'm gonna be, they're gonna like put some kind of liquid in me and I'm just gonna like pass out without, uh, I don't know, just kind of a weird concept. But um, outside of that, the other reason I wanted to do this now, because obviously this is not something that I can do while, um, while I'm like on prep, because this would obviously, or something like this would obviously throw like kind of a big wrench into a competition preparation. I just finished surgery. I went pretty well. And I was just sitting in the recovery room waiting for them to make me leave. Well, thank God that's over with. It went smooth. Um. Now I'm just going to get my prescription medications for this. There they are. I thought it came on my head. So Dominic had a little mishap at Kaiser. No, no. So that last clip that you guys just saw was I was at Kaiser and had to go or I wanted to go inside to get my medication even though Bianca told me to stay in the car I just went inside anyways and I was standing in line waiting to get my medication uh, long story short I started to feel like um, I don't know just like kind of like I was gonna throw up or something I don't really know how to explain it so then I just went and sat down in a chair and then I started to I started like profusely sweating I started to get like the chills and stuff and then I started to like and then they actually the uh, people who worked there were like oh code one code one and I guess it means like somebody's gonna like pass out or something like that then they like put me in like a wheelchair and like brought me to some room upstairs and like everybody who was like talking to me like their face basically looked like inverted colors so like that's basically what their faces like look like like obviously this is not the normal colors for an iphone i'm just saying like that's kind of what the color scheme of everything that i saw looked like was like inverted colors and um basically the conclusion was just that i was on my feet uh for too long after you know, too soon after I got the anesthesia. And my blood pressure, my blood pressure was extremely low, something like 60 over 30, which is very low. Yeah, that wasn't very fun, but um, I, you know, after I sat down for a while, I quickly recovered and that was that. Okay, we just got back home. Dominic, you okay? Yeah. You wanna say what happened to you at Kaiser? Uh, I'll explain it later when I can actually talk better. Well, he almost fainted at Kaiser, so. Now I'm going to make him his um, lunch smoothie. This is what he sent me to make him.
All right, so all the food choices that you've seen me eat so far are based off of um, fiber and calorie composition. I don't normally eat yogurts, but because of the fact that they do have, you know, some protein in there and that they're pretty high calorie considering how much food this is and it's soft and it's easy for me to eat with this with these open wounds in my mouth. That's why I'm eating them. I'm not eating them because they're good for me. I'm just eating them because they have protein and because um, it's soft and they're high calories. And I do like the taste of yogurt, although I'm not eating it for my health. Just wanted to give that quick piece of insight. What's up guys? So it is now a full seven days after the surgery. Basically, I just wanted to show you that with a little bit of diet, you know, proper water intake and some light exercise. My recovery honestly went very smooth. I still, you know, have very, I mean, I honestly didn't lose any size, didn't flatten out, nothing like that. So I hope this gave you guys some insight how to properly go about recovering from a four tooth extraction. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.